This is my go-to flour in Greece for sourdough. Protein content, 13%. This, bulk standard, all-purpose flour. Protein content, 11%. I want to take some vital wheat gluten, add it to this flour, bumping up the protein content, and see if it increases the strength and see if we can get a decent loaf for sourdough. Right guys, so this is the first time I'm playing around with this Vital Wheat Gluten, so I thought I'd do a video and bring you guys along. Now I think it's important to mention that this starter, I've actually fed four times and discarded four times, just to flush out as much of the high protein flour that I normally use to feed this starter. So I need enough starter to make two loaves today, and I'm gonna feed it at a ratio of one part starter to one part flour to one part water. Now, first up in my bowl, I'm weighing out 147 grams of the all-purpose flour, and to that, I'm gonna add three grams of the Vital Wheat Gluten. That needs a really good mix with a spoon then. I'm gonna get onto the Vital Wheat Gluten quantities a bit later in the video. Now I know I've got 150 grams of starter in my jar. I'm gonna pop that on the scales, add in 150 grams of water, add the flour in, and then give it a really good mix, pop the lid on and leave it to ferment. So now our starter has fermented, we can put the main dough together. Now, as I said, I haven't played with this at all yet. All I've done is put pen to paper, so I'm quite interested to see where this recipe goes. So into my mixing bowl, I'm adding 225 grams of room temperature water, followed by 10 grams of salt. Then I'm just gonna give it a quick stir with a spoon just to make sure the salt is nicely dissolved. Now, just to hammer it home, my starter has now been fed five times with that all-purpose flour. Now, I've chosen to use the Vital Wheat Gluten at 2% of the flour weight. Now, that should bump the protein content up, technically, from 11% to 13. I did a lot of online research. I probably found Serious Eats website the most helpful. I'll link to that in the description. But what I can tell you is I baked sourdough with this flour before and it was a disaster. This starter is certainly stronger, although it's definitely not as elastic as my normal 13% bread flour. I can now add 130 grams of the starter into the main bowl. In a separate bowl, I'm gonna weigh out 368 grams of the all-purpose flour and add in 12 grams of vital wheat gluten. I'm gonna give that a really good stir with a spoon and then add that into the bowl with the other ingredients. Give it a good stir with a spoon again to make sure everything's well incorporated. You can get your hand involved there for a couple of minutes. We're gonna cover it, leave it out at room temperature just to let that flour hydrate a little bit before we give it a quick knead. Uh, and by the way, I am burning through bowl scrapers at the moment. So if anybody's come across an amazing bowl scraper that doesn't keep falling apart after a couple of weeks, then do let me know in the comments. Right, so after the 20 minutes, we can get the dough turned out onto the work surface. As most of you all know, I don't use flour at this stage at all. And really, my aim here isn't to need it to build up strength it's really to make sure everything's well incorporated. And I'm not building up strength here specifically because I don't with my normal flour. And I wanna make sure I can kind of do a comparison really as a benchmark test. So work the dough over and over just to make sure there's no dry spots and to make sure that all of that start has been well worked through all of the other ingredients. We can then bring it up into a bowl, pop it back into our bowl, cover it with a plastic bag, and we can leave this out at room temperature to prove. Now I should mention that my kitchen is pretty damn hot at the moment. It's about 30 degrees and I've got my oven heating up there with the Challenger pan in there. So it's roasting in my kitchen today. So things are gonna happen pretty quick. So this actually took four and a half hours to bulk proof. I did tell you it was warm in my kitchen. Now through my experience working in these temperatures in my kitchen, I definitely don't want this bulk proof to go too far. Otherwise the dough seems to lose its integrity and it becomes a nightmare to work with. So with that said, we can now get on and shape our dough. Now it's time to flour the banneton. Now a lot of you guys have asked me in previous videos, what flour do I use? I use the normal flour that I'm baking with, but I do know that other people out there have great success using rice flour or blending bread flour with rice flour because they say it stops the dough sticking. So you might wanna try that. I'm giving the dough a light dusting of flour on the top and just round the edge of the bowl just to help me release it with my smashed apart bowl scraper and then we can gently let that drop out 
onto the work surface. I'm going to pull it out into a rough rectangle and then fold it into thirds. And then I'm going to roll this dough back on itself until I've basically got a sausage shape. And when I get to the end, I'm going to make sure the dough is nicely sealed. Tuck in the ends just to tidy it up a bit and then we can gently pop that into our banneton. If you feel any sticky points around any parts of the dough, then just add another little dusting of flour. You can always brush it off after the loaf's baked. Now we can cover this with a plastic bag and again we can leave this out at room temperature to prove. Of course you could slow this down in the fridge if you wanted to but I'm doing one bake in one day so that's not going to apply here. Again I've got a super hot kitchen today so this definitely isn't going to take very long. Now my dough has only been proving for 25 minutes but it's right where I want it. I can feel that it's nicely gassy. I don't want it to overprove. I want to save some of that energy so that I can try to get a nice spring when it goes into the oven. Now I'm going to be baking this in the Challenger pan that's been preheating in the oven for the last 45 minutes to an hour at 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you guys want to check the pan out I'll leave links in the description. I'm going to flour the top of the dough, turn it out onto my bread peel and then using my razor blade with one confident cut I'm going to open the bread up. That's going to allow it to expand in the oven. Then I'm going to slide it into the Challenger bread pan onto the base. I'm going to add two ice cubes, pop the lid on and then close the oven up. That's going to bake for the first 20 minutes still at 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. After that first 20 minutes I'm going to remove the lid. I'm not going to change the temperature, close up the oven door and then let it finish baking. And this is going to take somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 minutes. And then we can see what we've got. Now of course I didn't expect the vital wheat gluten to magically transform an all-purpose flour into a bread flour, that was never going to happen. But I was looking for some increased strength, that's for sure. Now I baked with this all-purpose flour a lot during lockdown, trying to create a sourdough recipe, and I could not get it to hold shape, so this is a vast improvement for sure. The crumb's obviously not that open, and I don't know if there's really enough strength in this dough to support that. The crumb's a bit softer than I'd expect and while the crust is nice and crispy or crunchy it's degrading a lot quicker than my normal sourdough that's for sure. But on the whole not bad. Now where would I use this? I'd probably use it in a flour that's good quality bread flour and I just wanted to bump that protein content up a little. That at the moment is where I think it's well placed. But let me know in the comments if you've got any experience baking with this vital wheat gluten. Anything that I could change for future bakes and your general thoughts are always appreciated. Guys, that's it from me today. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.